Tom Cruise has always been the top gun of action stunts and action sequences for as long as I can remember, but there's always been some deadly talent just around the corner looking to out-cruise Tom. With all this talk of James Cameron bringing revolutionary changes to underwater filming, an obvious wave of excitement surrounding the Avatar sequels has hit the internet, and a hugely talented Avatar superstar riding that wave has broken Tom Cruise's underwater stunt record. Yeah, hold your breath because I'm going to check out who it is, what they're up to, and what this means for the long-awaited new Avatar movies. Fly! Fly? <laughs> We've understood by now that Tom Cruise previously held the record for spending the most amount of time underwater, which was believed to have been six minutes. But six submerged minutes in the Tom Cruise world is like a hard day's work in the Dunder Mifflin Scranton office. So I believe that Tom would be more than happy to retire his aqua stuntman crown to the slightly disputed queen of water, Kate Elizabeth Winslet. Seriously though, it's been 23 years since Leo drowned in Titanic and maybe about 5 years since those plank buoyancy myths were falsified. But will that stop me from thinking about the absolute irony of this situation? Yeah, clearly not. But it's true. And Kate has once again proved that she's a star at navigating tricky waters. She held her breath underwater for a record-breaking time of 7 minutes and 14 seconds while filming for Avatar 2, in which she plays a quote-unquote water person. While Kate's breakthrough itself is great news, it also signals the fact that we are getting closer to that impending Avatar sequel, with just another year or two of waiting. And that's a big deal in itself, considering the fact that Avatar is still one of the highest grossing Hollywood films of all time. Avatar was released in 2009, and Avatar 2 will be coming out in December 2022, so expectations for the sequel and its visual payoff are too large to even bother calculating them. James Cameron went above and beyond with the production value of the franchise when he started, going as far as creating actual sculptures of the Na'vi tribe because the 3D designs weren't working too well for him. 2009 was a time when you'd go to watch a 3D film and more or less expect things to come flying at you. Then Cameron came along with his stereoscopic cameras and realistic depth perception and just blew our collective minds. Avatar is a polarizing film alright, but the hugely immersive experience it brought along changed the way that we indulged in 3D cinema. We were treated to a technology which mimicked natural eye movements and caught the actor's exact gestures to make the on-screen animations appear far more realistic, and needless to say, every animated movie that was released in the post-Avatar market had to automatically live up to this standard. But it's safe to say now that we've come a long way from there, and it won't be enough for Avatar 2 to simply be a visual spectacle. The movie will have to lay out a solid plot, better character arcs and subplots that appeal to audiences who have sustained movies like Infinity War and Endgame. I can't say how much Cameron will deliver to that end because he's been all hush hush about the details, but I do have some optics to work with, like for starters. We know that a lot of the film has been shot underwater, for which the actors physically got into the water. They had to do more with their organic lung capacity and become expert free divers for this, and all in all, the Avatar 2 crew logged more than 200,000 total free dives. Avatar 2 was also shot in what's being called as wet for wet performance capture, so it could well be on its way to becoming a significant diving movie. We can agree that the Pandora's box of creativity which Avatar wrenched open is nowhere close to shutting down, but how will the actual story lend to this? Like I mentioned earlier, the first movie wasn't big on character depth or immaculate storytelling, which we all kind of agreed to look past because, well, it was beautiful. The sequel also has a solid chance to improve on those lines and give us a narrative worth watching, but all I know for now is that it will be heavily focused on the theme of family. Jake and Neytiri will return after their 8 year time gap with a daughter, and Stephen Lang will bring Colonel Quaritch back to the scene, despite getting his chest punctured by arrows. As for the central conflict in Avatar 2, I think we could easily bank on Quaritch to rack up another insidious corporate takeover or be taken aback by his compassionate side if the film dives into his backstory. The best case scenario would of course be an Avatar in which both of these narratives play out. The interesting thing about the four planned sequels of Avatar is that they will all function as independent films. So you could supposedly ditch Avatar 3 for instance and still go watch Avatar 5 like a boss? Who knows? Knows? Maybe Tom Cruise will get himself hired as an extraterrestrial sea urchin to get his record back. Is this right? I just say whatever to huh. the video log? 
Good people of YouTube, thank you for sticking around and watching this video. Screen Rant has tons of great content about movies and TV shows, so make sure that you're subscribed to our channel to get the best of it. If you're extra prompt about these things, then I suggest to you that you hit that bell icon to get notified about our new videos. And that's it from me. Take care and hey, have a great day.